Hey everyone, Vinayak here. Today I have with me the Intel Arc A750, Intel's foray into the discrete GPU market. And these are the Alchemist series of GPUs. How well does it work? Let's check it out. Thanks to Vishal Computech for providing this review sample. Looking to purchase a new laptop or build a new custom PC for work or play? Vishal Computech is there to help. Located at showroom number 2, Park Lane in Secunderabad, make sure to visit the store for desktops, laptops, computer components and more. Also, there's a competition taking place on the 6th and 7th of October at the store, so don't miss it. This is the Intel Arc A750, a step below Intel's flagship GPU, the A770. This is the limited edition model, cool box in Intel Blue. Opening it up, we have the graphics card and we also have a card marked Let's Play. The Arc A750 is targeted at 1080p gaming. Here's the star, completely black in color. It comes with 285mm fans. This card is also heavy. We have Intel Arc marked on the side. This actually lights up. We have a chrome strip below. For power, it uses an 8-pin and a 6-pin connector. Arc A750 Limited Edition is marked on the back plate. I like the chrome accents on the edges here too. Looks really classy. It's a 2-slot card and even the mounting bracket is coated black in color. We also have Intel Arc marked here. Ports-wise, we have 3 display ports and 1 HDMI. Specs-wise, the card uses the XC-HPG architecture using TSMC 6 nanometer process tech. It has a transistor count of 21.7 billion, comes with 8 GB of GDDR6 memory. It has a 256-bit memory bus with 512 GBPS memory bandwidth. The bus interface is PCIe 4.0 into 16. It has 28 XE cores, ray tracing units, 448 vector engines, clock speed of 2050 MHz, 224 texture units, and a 225 watt TGP. For the test system, we have a Core i7-10700F with an ASRock Z490 Phantom gaming motherboard, 16 GB of RAM, and a 1000 watt Antec Gamer power supply, and it runs on Windows 11 Pro. You don't need such a high wattage power supply, a 550 watt PSU should suffice. First, my standard 3D Mark benchmarks. Times by we get 11,633, not bad comparatively, a 3060 gets around 9 to 10k, 6,531 in Port Royal as compared to 5,120 on a 3060, and 21,841 in Fire Strike. I can get better scores if I tweak the settings a bit, but out of the box, this is what I am getting. Also make sure that rebar is enabled to get maximum performance. Starfield medium settings we get 23 to 30 FPS with FSR 2 in New Atlantis which is very taxing on any GPU. Other areas, planets, we get around 30 FPS with fewer frame drops. FSR 2 is supported on all GPUs and not only AMD. Intel also supports XCSS super sampling which provides similar features. Atomic Heart, we get more than 110 FPS in 1080p at atomic settings. But this is with FSR 2 on, which makes the game super playable. In Ultra, we get around 170 plus FPS, sometimes jumping over 200. When we have a lot of action on screen, it does drop to 130 to 140 FPS. 1080p high brings the FPS above 200. Lies of P, 1080p high, we get average 126 FPS. 1080p medium, we get average 156 FPS. 1080p low, we get average 171 FPS. GTA 5 a classic. 1440p high, we get 134 FPS. And 1440p very high, we get 65 FPS. 1080p very high, 65 to 70 FPS. Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p high, no ray tracing, no FSR, we get 66 FPS. So Intel out of the blue has kind of pulled the rug from under Nvidia and AMD with competitive pricing and performance comparable to cards costing 5 to 10k more. Productivity apps like Premiere using the codec units within the card helps creators generate content faster. 3D application performance is also good, but all is not hunky-dory as prices from Team Green and Team Red are also dropping and catching up. So what's Team Blue going to do? The Intel RK750 performance is as per test is between an RTX 3060 and a 3060 Ti. I had problems in the beginning, but once I installed the latest drivers off of Intel's website, everything was smooth and stable. 
I have seen the Intel Arc K750 for around 21,500, which makes it a great option for budget gaming at 1080p. It had launched at 31k, and if it's really available at 21k, then it's a good deal. It's nice to see a new competitor in the GPU space, and the competition will help bring other manufacturers to try to offer more features at lower prices. Hoping that Intel starts to put pressure on Nvidia and AMD to bring out more healthy competition and also more choice. Intel has made strides in terms of driver support with regular updates and better performance. So this was a quick look at the Intel Arc A750. So what do you guys think? Would you pick one up? Make sure to comment below. So that was the video. Make sure to like, subscribe and also hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are added. Thank you for watching and see you all later.